In Fallout, there are many ways for the player to get better equipment. This can be done by looting areas of all their supplies, bartering with a traitor, or taking them by force by winning in a fair fight. Just to name a few. This is all well and good, but at the end of the day, these are all mostly legal ways to better your character. So what if we wanted a more criminally creative way to progress? Could that work? Well, that's what I aim to find out, as today's the day we figure out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only stolen equipment? What this means is I can only use items that I pickpocket off of people, or any item that the game tags as not belonging to me. This also goes for caps, not that that means a whole lot as the only services I'll be able to use money for will be repairs and the odd doctor for healing. This is because I'm not allowing myself to buy any weapons, armour or other supplies with these caps. While the money may be stolen, the items and equipment will not. With all that out of the way, let's begin. I start up with a relatively appropriate name, as well as creating a face that I've been using for characters for well over a decade by now, and then I move on to my special stats. I increase my strength to 9 because I feel that if I can only use stolen items, the likelihood of me having a steady supply of ammunition is pretty low, so melee weapons will probably be the key to victory. Intelligence and agility are both maxed out for an instant increase to my stealth, as the higher the stealth skill, the higher the chance of not getting caught while pickpocketing. I then drain the rest of my stats and put the last few points into endurance for a little added protection going forward. For my tag skills I take sneak, for obvious reasons, melee weapons for more damage with my primary method of attack, and then lock picking for the ability to steal even better items down the line should I get high enough to break into more complex safes and containers. Lastly I take heavy handed and skilled for my traits. As soon as I gain access to my inventory I drop everything I have until I am butt naked and then I begin my stealing spree. Everything in Doc Mitchell's house is free for you to take, so I leave and head for the house just to the left to see what kind of spoils we can find. The first thing I make sure to do is stash my 18 starting caps inside a container just so I can get rid of them and know that any caps I get from here on out are mine to use as I see fit. The best loot in this house was easily the food and the kitchen knife as this gave me at the very least some way to heal and defend myself. Next up was the saloon. I was able to get another weapon in the form of a pull cue, not something I would normally use but beggars can be choosers I suppose. Besides on the bright side they are common items in most settlements plus they are cheap to repair. I was also able to hack Judy's terminal to get me access to your safe which had a few good items inside, mainly a 9mm pistol and a stim pack. Finally, the main place to hit was Chet's store. I was able to get some decent leather armour here, which is nice. I'll feel better from here on out knowing that I have something between me and the bullets. I was also able to pickpocket a stim pack and 53 caps off of Chet before I killed him. I had no reason to kill Chet, but to be fair, I also had no reason to not kill him, so you can see the predicament I was in. This was the last of the major loot and good springs, so I began heading east to get to Vegas by way of Black Mountain. I get to test out the pull queue on a few coyotes that got in my way. Thanks to my high strength stat, it's honestly not the worst thing in the world if I'm being honest. Before marking Hidden Valley on the map, as I normally do, I stopped off briefly in Sloan where I was able to grab a bunch more food and caps, but more importantly, more knives and pull cues. Knowing that my weapons will now not break under the pressure of a slight breeze, I head to Hidden Valley and begin battering around some of the bark scorpions until I level up and take the swift learner perk. A lot of the perks that will help me out in this run, such as Jury Rigger, can't be taken until I'm a higher level, so this will hopefully speed up the process. As I make my way through the Black Mountain shortcut, it occurs to me that I won't actually be able to take the NCR uniform. This means I'll need to find another way to get onto the strip. I'm also aware the chances of me stealing 2000 caps are relatively low, and seeing how I can't buy the passport off of Mick, my only other option is to fight past the Securitrons. To start, I figured it couldn't hurt to get better weapons, so I went to the Kings in the hopes of getting the unique straight razor that the Barber uses. Sadly however he has it equipped on his person so that was out of the picture. I was lucky enough to find a 9-iron just lying around that was also in a fairly good condition so it wasn't a complete bust coming here. There is one more area in Freeside I want to hit before heading to the strip and it's the Van Graffs. They have a wide assortment of energy weapons just sitting out in the open ripe for the picking. Obviously if I tried to steal them as is I would immediately get vaporised by all of the guards. But, as many of you are probably aware, I can just carry the items into the nearby toilets and then just steal them from there as no one patrols that part of the shop. So I do this for a while until I've stolen a decent number of their weapons. I should note I purposely didn't take everything, just so if I need more firepower later I know I have something to fall back on. Feeling as ready as I could be, I went to the entrance to the strip and it finally happened. I can't pickpocket the Securitrons, so therefore I cannot steal the key and that means no entrance to the strip. This leaves me with three options. One, somehow steal 2000 caps. 2. Get a science skill of 80 to skill check my way through, or 3. And perhaps the easiest option, I go to Camp McCarran and try to steal an NCR uniform and enter the strip that way. Well, I arrive at Camp McCarran and I'm not lucky enough to find a uniform, but I do manage to steal an insane amount of healing supplies like doctor spikes and stem packs, as well as some recreational drugs. Not to worry though, as the NCR station at Prim have a few armour cases which I can rob. 
So, with back to Good Springs, I begin the short jog to their tents. I of course murder some powder gangers on the way for some easy experience and to steal their dynamite. I do let my guard down however and end up setting off a powder charge by mistake and become dead. Second attempt and I make sure to watch where I'm going and I make it to Prim safe and sound. I actually managed to snag two NCR bandolier outfits, never going to complain about having extra protection. I then suit up, head back to Camp McCarran, board the monorail and arrive in the strip. I don't really feel like I have the supplies to go in guns blazing in the tops, so I actually hand over a decent chunk of my weapons at the door. Not to worry though as that still leaves me with my kitchen knives as well as a bunch of explosives, mainly the plasma grenades I procured from the Van Graffs. Seeing how Benny doesn't aggro you as he walks down the stairs, I thought now would be the best time to try and steal the platinum chip, but lo and behold, apparently you cannot steal it off of him, so it looks like we have hit another snag in this playthrough. The chip is required to use in three of the four factions you side with, as you need it for Yes Man and Mr. House to upgrade the Securitrons, and Caesar makes you use it to access the bunker under the fort. So, that means I'm siding with the NCR again. But, that presents its own small issue. At some point, they will want me to take out House. There are two ways to get into House's antechamber, and that's by having the Platinum Chip or a Science Skill of 75 to hack the terminal. Despite the fact I would much rather be putting my points into sneaking melee weapons, I'm going to be forced to grind out a few levels just to proceed with the story. Back to the matter at hand though, I shove a stick of dynamite I stole from the powder gangers right into Fancy Pants and he explodes. This will then cause the NCR messenger to approach me once I leave and I go right to Crocker to get my assignment for the boomers. I don't head to Nellis just yet, but instead go back to Prim and put some of those plasma weapons to work by rescuing the deputy and then putting my science skill to good use to put the one true sheriff in charge of the town. I didn't get enough experience to level up, so I continued down the road taking out the nearby jackals and rad scorpions with a 9-iron. Which, by the way, is proving to be a pretty great weapon. When I squished the final bug, I leveled up, increased my science skill to 70, and since I had the programmer's digest, I could use that to give me just enough points to pass the hard computer skill check. Technically, 65 would have been enough, but I couldn't remember if I would need to use the skill check to bypass the Securitron and Freeside, so I just wanted to play it safe. Before heading back to the Lucky 38, I decided to pay the Mojave Outpost a visit. This was mainly so that I could use my heart stolen caps to repair my 9-iron and my pull cube both to max. I may have also gotten sidetracked with some activities while I was there. For the Republic! Well, turns out I didn't need the 80 points in science as they just let me enter the strip, no problem. I get pretty lucky with the passwords for both of House's terminals, guessing them both within just a few seconds. What was not lucky however, was the amount of blood I lost just trying to get into the room. I didn't mean for this walk to look this dramatic, I'm actually suffering from a super stimpack debuff and couldn't run. Now it was time to get Mr. House out of the picture, and all I can say is one thing. Bioshock reference. Killing House this way on top of completing the quest gets me a whole chunk of experience. It also means I can start falling points into melee weapons and even manage to grab the super slam perk. I decide to put this to good use by going to Gamora and doing what I do best. With everything finished for the time being on the strip, I head out for Nellis to meet the boomers. I finally got the timing down for the bombardment, so I'll just skip ahead to the bit where we meet Pearl. Now, I could help them with a few of their issues such as clearing out the ants or fixing the solar panels, but in the end, it would all be pointless. This is all due to the fact that I will need to use Law's detonator to raise the bomber from the lake, and as we all know, that's not a stolen item, so I physically have no way of finishing this questline. With that in mind, I kill Pearl with irony and then I begin ransacking her house. By far, the most important item I stole here was a suit of combat armor and a helmet to match. Needless to say, this is a major improvement over the mostly broken leather armor I've been running around with. When I'm finished at Pearl's, I give Argyle a warm welcome and load a few of the healing supplies that he has lying around. I then began systematically making my way around all of the men and women's barracks with my 9-iron, and all the while stealing a huge assortment of ammo, stim packs, and many, many suits of combat armor. There was so much combat armor in fact that I was able to fully repair my own and still have like 4 or 5 sets left just for repairs. Basically, I am just going to leave them here, as I can't carry any more, and if need be, I'll come back and get them before the final battle. During the pillaging, I managed to level up and decide to put all of my points into repair. The idea being that I'll have just enough points by the time I hit level 14 to get the jury rigging perk, meaning repairing my weapons should be a lot easier. Speaking of weapons, I was lucky enough to steal a sledgehammer, which is just a massive improvement over the 9-iron in pretty much every way. I then took said hammer and used it to pummel the other half of the boomer's leadership into the dust. With that, my task was… kind of complete and I returned to Ambassador Crocker to feel the quest. But still progress with the NCR faction story. Next up is Assassinating Pacer. I know you can settle this matter peacefully, but I did that last time, so I'm going to kill him. Well, I can't make it look like an accident with the Van Graffs because that requires me to take some of their weapons and armour, and I also can't poison his jet supply because I'm too stupid to figure out how medicine works. That pretty much leaves me with just a single option. Mindless unfiltered slaughter with a hammer. I don't make the rules. Well, Pacer goes down in one stealth attack, but then in the ensuing chaos I accidentally killed every other king in the building, including the main man himself. 
fucking whoops. As you can imagine, Crocker isn't best pleased with this, so now he's sending me off to Hoover Dam to report to Colonel Moore instead. Still being a ways off from level 14, I decided to make a quick pit stop in Boulder City to quickly resolve the situation with the Great Cans. Lacking the speech skill, coupled with the fact that I would soon be paying Red Rock a visit, I decided the best course of action for Jessup and his friends was a mallet straight to the face. The experience gained from the murder in the quest let me hit level 10, which also let me take the Here and Now perk to jump straight to level 11. So just a few more quests or killing sprees and I will have that jury rigging perk. As I leave Boulder City, I shoot the memorial for old time's sake just to let Kowalski stretch his legs for a while. Meeting up with Colonel Moore at the dam and the first task is getting rid of the cans, so I fast travel to Camp McCarran and begin heading west. As is usually the case when heading this way, I knock heads with some of the more notable fiends. First up is Cook Cook who is pretty much powerless to stop the overpowered nature of the super slam perk and as such he explodes. Next was Violet. Even though charging in with the hammer would probably get me quick and easy results, I decide to actually use some of the laser weapons I stole earlier. I was able to completely dust her dogs before pulling the weapon on her and taking her down rather anticlimactically. Before heading into the canyon I made use of the frag grenades I stole from the boomers to make short work of the two cans in the unmarked armory. Not a lot to say about the loot in here, all I was able to really get was a bunch of shells for a shotgun I don't even have. My master plan when I entered the longhouse was to just throw two plasma grenades in Papa Can's general direction. However, the first grenade instead hit one of the cans straight in the jaw and fell onto the floor. This means when I threw the second one, the explosion from the first caused it to detonate much closer to my face than I would have liked. This still got me rather good results as it cleared out most of the weaker cans in the room. Papa Cam was still alive and I threw another grenade to catch him as he was leaving and once again it bounced off of him. But I was somehow lucky enough for the sheer impact to cripple his leg. By some act of god Papa managed to survive another explosion and managed to make it outside. I then followed him and proceeded to finish the job with my sledgehammer as to not leave anything else up to chance. I then retreated back to the longhouse and began swinging like a madman as the idiotic cans all funneled their way through the door and straight to their doom. After this last batch was dealt with that was pretty much it for the cans so all that was left was to search their tents for some drugs to steal. As I exit the longhouse one final time I jump out of my skin as Kowalski is just standing there waiting for me. I decide not to anger him further because I still only have a neutral rep with the NCR and I can't risk being on bad terms with them. After I compose myself I begin searching the tents and nearby drug dens and managed to find exactly what I was looking for. Turbo. Two doses in fact. This combined with a good melee weapon will be a huge help in the battle with the Legate later. After clearing out a few surviving cans I managed to level up and get the necessary repair skill to be able to acquire the jury rigging perk in two more levels. Returning to the dam and I get congratulated on the slaughter as well as a few tasks I did earlier on the strip and now I get sent off to deal with the Brotherhood. When I arrive at the bunker I let the Brotherhood strip me of all my items and I go and speak to the Elder. When I'm tasked with dealing with the ranger I take my equipment back and just to be safe I drop some of it on the ground just to make sure it's still marked as stolen. Thankfully it is so I continue to the other bunker to deal with Dobson. I decide to put my sneak skill to use as I really hadn't been using it as much as I would have thought in a run like this and use the old reverse pickpocket dynamite trick. This indeed got rid of Dobson but it appeared to work too well as it caused a chain reaction with some nearby grenades and resulted in my death. Next attempt, still ever determined to use the dynamite, I once again shoved it inside his pocket but then ran for the exit and just about managed to survive the blast. With the job well done I return to the Brotherhood, get the collar removed and then get to work getting rid of them. If there was ever a playthrough to blow up the bunker it is most certainly this one given the fact that the codes you have to use need to be stolen, therefore being fair game to use in a run like this. But more importantly the real reason I am down here as well as the reason for me wanting to get the jury rigger perk in the first place hardened super sledge that he just leaves lying out in the open. This is by far the best weapon I can acquire from my build so things are about to get pretty simple from here on out. I take the cards and my hammer to the terminal to activate the self destruct sequence but first I deal with the head scribe and Watson just so I wouldn't get fired upon immediately. After the code is entered I make a mad dash for the exit and decide to stop and take out Ramos along with a few nearby knights just to see how I fare. Not really surprising but I do manage to take them all down with relative ease. If it weren't for all the healing items I'd have to use it may honestly have been worth it for the experience if I just went and killed all the brotherhood myself. But that's not what happened so once they were no more I started climbing black mountain so I could get the experience for dealing with Tabitha. The super mutants and nightkin are not too bad to deal with. The sole exception of course being the sniper with the missile launcher. I tried to sneak up to him but to no avail and got myself crippled. Thankfully I had a single doctor's bag left so I used it to heal myself as I ran underneath him and used the vats melee trick to teleport up next to him and take him down. Since I have a high enough science skill I was actually able to repair Rhonda and get the peaceful outcome for this quest. Which was nice I suppose. I was now level 13 with a maxed out melee weapon skill so if I just continued on with the next mission I should get more than enough experience to hit level 14 just before the final battle. 
But before that, I pay one last visit to the Mojave Outpost to fully repair my sledgehammer and pull cue so that when I finally get the perk, I will be able to repair my super sledge with them and have it in full condition. To get the necessary experience though, I would need to save the president, so it was back to Murr and then Ranger Grant to start the quest. Usually, I just blaze through this as you just have to wait for the engineer to arrive, steal his detonator, and then show it to Ranger Grant and the day is saved. But I tried something new, and once I grabbed the detonator, I tried confronting the engineer myself. It seemed like it worked, but then, despite the fact he very loudly proclaims, for the Legion, the NCR turn on me and I get killed instead. Confused but ever persistent, I try it again and this time the NCR don't declare me public enemy number one and they instead have the snipers do their job and take out the assassin. With that, it's time for the Battle of Hoover Dam and just like I thought, as soon as I get transported to Oliver, I get the necessary experience to level up, max out my repair skill and finally, at the tail end of the run, take the jury rigging perk. With my current build, a fully repaired super sledge does 89 base damage and 133 DPS. I feel I can show you what that means better than I can tell you. Even the Legate didn't stand a chance as he gets battered around the camp. So with that, the battle was won, and as I went to leave, I saw a most curious sight as there was a random NCR Ranger fighting a Legion Mongrel at the gate. He obviously won the fight, but when he did, he began aggressively teabagging as to assert his dominance over winning the fight. Anyway, after I was finished taking in that, I approached the gate, greeted General Oliver, ending the game and proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallen New Vegas with only stolen equipment. This run was a lot of fun. It got shockingly easy towards the end, I will admit, with that super sledge and jury rigging business. In retrospect, it probably would have been a good idea to focus my build around energy weapons and explosives, as that way I could have really made use of all the weapons I stole from the boomers and the van graphs. Regardless, that's going to be the end of this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like. If you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe to try to one of these videos out every week. My name is Norbert, stay safe everyone, I'll see you all in the next video.